Hey again guys, and welcome back. Today I want to do a little bit of shop infrastructure. So, there's come comes a point where I need to like, power something, which is just fine. I typically use this guy here to power my projects. This is a D3806, if you just uh, plug D3806 uh, into um, the old eBay there you'll end up with this thing. This module is really nice. It's uh, cost me about, I think it was about 20 bucks Canadian at the time. I don't know how much they are now, but if you need something to power your projects, this thing is perfect, basically. It goes up to uh, 38 volts and up to 6 amps, and it takes a huge input range. So I typically power it from this uh, brick here. It's kind of stuck on my garbage can on the side there we go so this power brick is a 12 volt 4 amp power brick um, I got this at like a thrift store I go to thrift stores check the uh, electronic sections often and uh, these things usually cost me about four bucks I also pick up wool warts that are like 12 volt 2 amp and more some 5 5 volt bricks and stuff like that for future projects so I have them on hand but if you can go to your thrift store take a look on the back here you see 12 volt 4 amp output so that works great uh, 48 watts isn't quite enough for this module I do have a 24 volt power supply which I bought to charge um, RC batteries with which is I believe it's a 4 amp so 24 volt 4 amp it's quite a beastly unit but I try not to turn it on all the time uh, this guy here is pretty much plugged in all the time. What's great about getting a thrift store power supply is that typically they are UL listed and CE and all the good stuff so they won't catch on fire and most of them have uh, short circuit protection where they'll just shut off if you short circuit them. I actually did short circuit this time a few this thing a few times by accident. So I plug that in this way. I have a, it has a little barrel jack. I got lucky it has a barrel jack. But this input also has like, this uh, device also has these two terminals for input. As per output, I put some of these guys on. These are nice uh, clamps. I've got uh, a video on these. Um, it's okay for now. I do want to find out, find something more permanent, like a multi-output I can do. So yeah, this thing is good, but Let's say I want to power a breadboard project. So like this one is an example. Okay, this is a breadboard project. I would use these breadboard jumpers. I would plug that in. But now what happens if I need to take a look at this project at what's going on here with my oscilloscope? Now I have another oscilloscope up there. It's very awkward to get into shot. Uh, I may set something up differently so that it'll be available to shoot with. But this thing needs a 9 volt battery. So, like, you know, this guy. Problem with 9 volt batteries is that, let's say I have to do a long video, it takes multiple takes, whatever, these 9 volt batteries, they drain really, really quickly. So, I could power this from a power supply like that, but if they, if my project needs more or less than 9 volts, then how the heck am I going to get 9 volts to this thing while supplying power to this if I don't have any more of these batteries? And they do get quite kind of costly. I usually use one of these batteries up per video that I use these batteries in. So they last me one video and they're done, throw them away. We should have a better way to do this. So I want to build a second multi-output power supply. It doesn't have to be as variable as this guy but it needs to be able to give me a few fixed voltages. So I had the idea of using these uh, LM317s. There's a video coming on this in the future, but the problem with the LM317s is that they are linear. They'll just burn off any excess voltage that we're not using. So they're okay for very, very low current, but other than that, not really. I actually powered that oscilloscope with the, um, with the LM317. That's what's on there now and it got so hot you couldn't touch it. If I left it too long it would destroy the LM317 like this one here. I put a little X on the back because it is burnt out. So I have to figure out something. So first let's uh, let's 
see what my requirements are. So to list out my requirements, I'm going to want multi-voltages. Uh, pardon my shitty handwriting. So I probably, the most important for me is like 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts. I think maybe I would want a 3 volt power supply and maybe, maybe a multi, like an adjustable. So like this guy is adjustable. Maybe having another one would be great. I do have uh, this little guy, which is just a buck converter, so I can put high voltage in and get low voltage out, but I think it only goes up to about 20 volts, and um, you can only output less than you put in. This guy, it's a buck boost, so with this 12 volt, I can output 38 volts, no problem. So I think I want that, maybe the multi, but uh, important, very important, this is non-negotiable. The 9 volt has to have a 9 volt battery terminal. Um, so I have this guy here, which I recovered from a 9 volt battery. You can see it comes from there. And this will go to power stuff like this. This one has a barrel jack, so it's not entirely necessary. It also has a JST. But things like this guy, with the 9 volt um, plug-in, I will just be able to, you know, plug this in and this will have wires coming off to this unit. So, yeah, I can definitely do that. So, that needs to be done. Um, 5 volt, well, um, I would also like a USB socket on it because there's a lot of stuff that's powered by USB. Just really convenient to have a USB power supply kicking around, so we'll just go USB here for sure. Uh, 3 volts, yeah, 12 volts, yeah. Uh, it has to be um, multi-input, or multi-output, I should say. Meaning, I need to be able to use any of these voltages in sequence, so I can use them at all at the same time. Um, multi-interface. So I want this to be able to use, let's say, like these kinds of terminals, so I can just put flying leads on. I should have a way to clip um, alligator clips onto them. I should have a way to use a 4 millimeter banana, which looks a little bit like this guy. I have a bunch of these that I can make leads out of. Uh, and breadboard, so I should be able to use these little um, breadboard leads here, these guys. So, pins. So, multi output, multi interface, and uh, switchable. So, meaning that I should be able to turn off the outputs if I don't need them. And in fact, probably turn off the supply to whatever is going to make the output. So, we're not just burning current for no reason. For example, this is a 12 volt um, 4 amp supply. So if I'm already using two amps through here, and I need a couple more outputs, I don't be, want to be wasting uh, current on the outputs I'm not using, because we have a limited amount here. Mind you, I can plug this into the 24 volts, but you know the the, the potential here is I want to be able to have it versatile, and I'd like it compact slash portable. So compact because, well, look, we don't have that much space in our, in like, the, the frame of the camera, and my workbench doesn't actually go much further than the frame of the camera, so it can't take up much space on the bench, I don't have much space to store it, and portable because this could be useful in other locales, so let's say I'm doing a project on location, I'd like it to be able to be used there. So, that's pretty much it. So my requirements are uh, definitely has to be 5 volt with a USB socket uh, as well as just raw 5 volt output, 9 volt with a 9 volt battery connection, uh, 12 volt would be fantastic so we'll do that, 3 volt is kinda so-so and you know and multi is kinda so-so. 
these things are really what I want. So the multi-output, these guys, multi-interface, different ways to interface it, switchable, compact, and portable. So let's look around for the parts I have here and see if we can prototype something like this. And, you know, this will be rough, but it's just a proof of concept. So let me gather up some stuff and I'll bring you right back. So this is just about the stuff that I was able to gather up really quickly. So here are these guys. So these guys here are DC to DC buck converters. So that means it takes a higher DC voltage and drops it to a lower DC voltage. If you can see these little guys here, these are actually like microscopic little trim uh, potentiometers. So you can actually set the output on these things but the output isn't easily settable. That uh, pot's a little finicky, it's very small, very hard to get to. But the benefit is these things are incredibly cheap. So these little micro guys, these are, uh, these are tiny. So every hole, every uh, square on this mat is a half inch. So you can sell, it's about, uh, you know, three, maybe three quarters of an inches, three quarters of an inch by half inch. So it, it is tiny, like this thing is very small. Let's, uh, let's see, how many for you, for the millimeters here? Um, about like 11 mil by 18 mil, 11 by 18. Does that make sense? Yeah, whatever, something like that. So these things are fantastic for stuff that doesn't change often. So you set it once and kind of forget it. Uh, these guys are the exact same thing. In fact, I believe the exact same chip it's just that these seem to have a diode. Uh, is there a diode on this guy? No. So I think these are reverse polarity protected. And um, I think by the listing, these guys can handle a slightly higher input voltage. I think these guys are maximum like maybe 20 volts, and these are maximum like 25 or 30. But I mean, in Canadian pesos, they're about 60 cents each. So if I have to sacrifice, you know, one, two, three, four of these for this project, that's not very expensive, really, in the end. And I think I might have a trick to um, kind of ignore this 12 volt one uh, once we get there. So I think I want to use these little guys. I have some more on order because today we're going to prototype them. They might be hard to remove from the prototype. So yeah, I got some more. Uh, so we've got my USB connector, I've got the 9 volt connector which I have to add wires to. We'll see how easy it's going to be to solder. I've got these little switches. So I figure these guys will be fed in by a DC voltage and I'll use these switches to turn on and off the output. So that's good. So I'll actually switch the, the input to this instead of the output and they should just output nothing while they're switched off. So I think I'm going to go with these guys. I might test these guys, we'll see. Um, this guy, we'll have to see what I can do because the, um, the input is actually available like through the case here. You can actually reach the input-output terminals and I can actually desolder these. So we'll see, maybe I'll add this guy as another like board. I don't know if it'll be part of the prototype. But uh, I have these soldering boards, this Vero board. And if you check this out, I think Let's see, let's say if I need 3, 5, and 9, and 12, I'll maybe have a trick for. So these guys can probably sit something like this. 1, 2, 3, and... Yeah, they do 3. So 3, 5, and 9, and then 12, I'll I have a workaround. So I think this would be great, and look how compact this is looking. So if you figure somewhere on here we'd need some switches, which we probably won't add today simply because we're not making a case today we're just prototyping so one two and three so like that so I think I think this is doable I think this is doable and uh, you know I want this prototype to be functioning so that I can actually start using it right away I have some videos where I need multi multiple outputs and this is problematic because I don't have access to them so It'd be nice, though, in the end, if the finished product wasn't much bigger than this. So, yeah, I think I'm going to start by uh, putting some uh, header pins in and sort of lining these up and popping them on. Probably do them on this side. 
and then we shall see what we can get done. So let me see if I can prototype this out and we'll go from there.